What's happening, everybody? I'm Steve from the Whiskey Hideaway. My buddy Ty is back yet again for a cocktail today. Um, normally, he's here to just, you know, have a sip, but we're going to be sipping on something that's called the Suburban Cocktail. And this is uh, cocktail number six out of 50 in the Bourbon Bartender book that I've been perusing through. Um, so today, in this cocktail, we are going to be using Southern Star Paragon Weeded Straight Bourbon Whiskey, which comes in at a whopping 92 proof. And along with that, in this cocktail, we also have port wine, which I picked up a bottle of Taylor. And then also in this, uh, a dark rum. So I got the black spiced rum, the Kraken here, and uh, that's 94 proof. You've had this one, for oh, sure. Yeah. I've had a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> and then also orange bitters, and then some Angostura bitters, and that is it. So we're gonna shake this up. Um, and Ty's not the only one here. We do have Ty's wife, Tabitha, behind the camera. She'll pop her head in here once the cocktail's all mixed up <laughs> and uh, and tell us what she thinks, maybe. So what have you been... You said you were at the lake yesterday? Yeah, yeah, we spent all day at the lake yesterday, so uh, we, uh, we, got, we got a good sunburn going and uh, got good and, good and sore and... We had some uh, excitement this uh, this afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, pulled a water marks in up from the top of my fuel tank in my car. That was fun. It was in my seat when I got home. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I was getting some supplies for making cookies with my daughter, and uh, I just happened to be going back to my house, and he's standing on the side of the road with his neighbors and he's got this <laughs> big about, snake. About a three foot snake, yeah. Uh, I think it was a little bit longer than that. <laughs> I mean, it was, you're holding it like this and yeah, it was, it was hanging on the ground, yeah. Like, uh, but four uh, foot. yeah, it's still wiggling and turning around and everything. So, uh, but uh, you got her all skinned up for dinner. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I figured, uh, figured it'd make a nice belt. Heck yeah, heck yeah, <laughs> definitely. Ounce and a half. This orange bitters? Yeah, there yeah, is. There okay. Just enough. Taylor bitters. We get her nice and chilled. Okay, so suburban cocktail. Give it a go. Come okay. on and grab you your cocktail. Squeeze in. I'll squeeze in for this one. <laughs> Cute glass. Cheers, everyone. Oh, that's tasty. Mmm. I kind of like that. Wow. You know, I know it's not... It must be the rum that I'm tasting in this. They kind of give it... Uh, it gave it... Almost kind of a dark chocolate. The flavor. back of the nose yeah. thing, like right between yeah. the back of your nose and the top of your tongue. Yeah. So I get the same. Uh, I get the same kind of like. It's not like a. I don't think it's a flavor. I think it's like a mouth feel, right? <laughs> yeah. Like it's not it, quite it's, a flavor, it's like, but it's, it's like right a little, there. Like a little sandy, a little gritty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I get that. Uh, I get that same kind of note when uh, when I have um, sherries and ports and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So it may be the pork coming through okay i'm getting a lot of the um the sugars from the from the kraken on like the sides of my tongue and stuff like that yeah all like like molasses and with stuff. all of that going on in there i don't hardly i don't hardly taste the paragon at mm. all i mean it just got sort of lost it's kind of like, like right in the middle of the right in the middle of the tongue i mm. get a little bit of the bourbon notes but it's a flash and then it's gone mm. so is there more bourbon or is there more rum there's more bourbon because yeah. I just taste cracking. Really? <laughs> <laughs> no, there's there's literally there's three uh, ounce and a half pours of bourbon in there, and there's only an ounce and a half of the cracking in there. Okay. My tongue tastes the bourbon. Yeah. But I, well, my tongue feels the bourbon. <laughs> Your tongue always tastes. Right, right. But I taste the cracking, mm. which is strange. <laughs> Man, no, it's good. I like it. Now, I, there is a note on here. That it says, uh, the younger, fruitier notes of ruby port complement this recipe. 
but also try it with the nuttiness of an older tawny port, okay. which works nicely with the rum and whiskey. So when it comes to ports, I don't know a thing. Yeah. Okay, I don't drink that much wine. So. A great thing about this whole experience for me is that my, my, my little bar cart in the house is yeah. getting a lot of extra bottles on there that it's <laughs> never seen before. And there's going to be definitely, you know, every time that we have like a little get together up here, at some point during the evening, we start mixing stuff. Yeah. And, and doing experiments on everything. It's... I'm going to go back to my chair now. Okay. okay. Enjoy Thank your you. Enjoy your drink. Yes. <laughs> The the book. Mm -hmm. um, so you're gonna do all the all fifty cocktails in the book. I'm gonna try. Okay. Yeah. Um, kind of like then, the whole Julia and Julia thing, you know, where she did all the recipes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm trying to do that with yeah, this. Yeah. So, but but as somebody that is not, you know, I'm not a bartender. I'm I've I've never been you know taught all these different you know things that, you know, anybody that is a mixologist or anything like that does. You know, I'm just going at this by somebody that knows nothing, which I do. I know nothing, and uh, and and has this book and wants to you know experience all this stuff. Yeah. Here's an idea. Uh, before we uh, kind of have this episode come to a close, what do you think adding smoke to this would do? I mean, you know, we're gonna try it. So <laughs> why ask? The let's question go. is, which smoke do Ooh. you want? The you apple. Want to go and try the apple. Yeah, let's do the yeah. apple. Let's do that. I know that we have apple and have used it many times. Well, you know, apple is just good with everything. So, I, yeah. yeah. AC's on. <laughs> Take my smoke away too too quickly. A little bit. All right, here we go. Doesn't change the profile too much of the cocktail. No. But definitely adds another layer on the front end. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and also on the back end. It kind of disappears in the middle, mm -hmm. but like once the, it once tones down that wine, the, the, the yeah, the wine kind of gets lost with the smoke a little bit. Yeah, I think. getting a, a, a melon note to it now. Melon, kind of like a melon rind, like a like a not like water, not melon, a watermelon, but like cantaloupe. Yeah, maybe cantaloupe or no, more like a honeydew. Okay, yeah, I can see the honeydew yeah. a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like right there, like after, like the, the, the second after it hits your tongue. It's got this, uh, like, um, I, sweet melon. I thing. really like, like the cool. Paragon with this, and it does call for a bourbon. Now, yeah. that's a weeded bourbon. Right. I honestly think that a rye would make this a much better cocktail. I think it would stand out a little bit more with a rye. I, I, I'm, I'm wanting a little bit of a, a peppery note in there. And, and yeah, it's, something it's very... to cut the sugar a bit. Mm -hmm. It's it's sweet. Yeah. Don't get well. For folks that like to sip on neat whiskeys, it's a little sweet. Yeah. But uh, for you know, for folks that are, are used to drinking um, wine and stuff like that, where it's already got that sugar content, in it, yeah. I don't think it would be too far out of the way. Now, when we first started sipping on this, and everybody was like, yeah, that cracking is coming through, yeah. it kind of is not there it's anymore. It's kind of disappeared as well. Mm. The sweeter spirits have kind of mm -hmm. dissipated with the smoke. Do you want to try it smoked? Can I have a sip of yours and start yeah. smoking yeah. mine? Yeah, come, come on. on. It smells good over here. I taste more bourbon. This go more bourbon, less more wine, bourbon, less, less rum. Yeah. And the, mm. I think uh, I think the the orange bitters got a little bit lost as well. Yeah, it wasn't. The orange bitters were not powerful at all in the first place. No, um, you did get a little bit of a citrus note, but like it was fleeting at best. I'm honestly surprised that this didn't have. This is one of the first cocktails in this series that didn't require a garnish. Whereas and orange would have been good yeah. anyway, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. originally. Yeah, a lot of these cocktails don't call for oranges; they call for lemons. Yeah. So, but most of your whiskey cocktails are going to take yeah. something that's a little bit more, you know, sour or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, it makes sense. It is good with the apple, though. Which I, really I do like the apple spot. I, like it, I think it turned out pretty good, but it does it does change <laughs> it into an almost completely different cocktail. Uh mm huh. -hmm. That's pretty good. I like it. 
I do too. Turned out all right. Hasn't been a cocktail yet that I didn't like through this series. We'll keep going and, until we get one. I don't know. We might find one. Um, so, just to guys, give you guys a little preview on the next one, I haven't gone ahead. Oh! Oh, boy! <laughs> so, we're going to be, in the next video, uh, we are going to be doing the julep. So, uh, you know, join us for that. A pretty simplistic drink. For sure. But we're real good at them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Definitely. All right, guys. Ty, thanks again for coming over, bud. Absolutely. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.